Child stars often grow up under intense pressure, but few could have predicted the dark turn in DJ Daniel's life. Once known as Michael on the Hewleys, in this video, I'll take you on a story that may shock you, because DJ's life beginning as a child actor may have been ruined from the start, and not by his parents as we typically think in cases like this, but by his other dad in the Hewleys, co-actor D.L. Hewley, and his connection with the Bloods. But first, let's talk about the murder that got him in trouble in the first place. The murder of J.J. Lewis. In 2011, former child actor D.J. Daniels, known for his role as Michael on the Hewleys, found himself at the center of a tragic event. This incident not only changed his life, but also resulted in the death of a young man named J.J. Lewis. The story of what happened that night is filled with tension, speculation, and questions about Daniel's involvement. On August 26, 2011, what started as a regular night out quickly turned deadly. DJ Daniels and his friends, Marcus McClyman and Dwayne Noonley, were at Chitiva's Salsa and Sports Bar in Stockton, California. After the bar closed, a heated argument broke out between Daniels' group and another group of people. The argument soon turned into a physical fight. During the chaos, J.J. Lewis was stabbed multiple times, with the wounds piercing his heart and lung. Sadly, he didn't survive. Another person, a woman, was also stabbed, but managed to survive her injuries. The violence of that night shocked everyone involved and led to a complex legal case, the case against D.J. Daniels. After the fight, police quickly arrested Daniels, McClyman, and Noonley. They were charged with murder, gang participation, and attempted murder. For Daniels, the stakes were high. If convicted, he could face life in prison. The prosecution argued that Daniels was involved in a gang-related killing, pointing to his tattoos and associations as evidence. Daniels, however, insisted he was innocent. He said he wasn't the one who stabbed J.J. Lewis and that he was wrongly accused. His defense team worked hard to show that while Daniels was there, he wasn't the one responsible for the stabbing. However, the prosecution tried to connect him to the crime by focusing on his past and the fact that he grew up in Compton, a place known for gang activity. There's a lot that doesn't add up, especially when Marcus McClyman, one of the people arrested alongside Daniels, took the stand. McClyman claimed full responsibility for the stabbing that led to J.J. Lewis's death, saying that Daniels and the other co-defendant, Dwan Noonley, had nothing to do with it. But let's think about this for a second. Does this make sense? The uh, deputy district attorney, Janet Smith, said, I don't think the victim got the justice he should have gotten. She felt like, what, all three of y'all should have got life in prison, basically. First off, it's important to remember that DJ Daniels was the most famous person involved in this case. As a former child star, he had way more to lose than McClyman or Noonley. Fame can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it gives you visibility and a platform, but on the other, it makes you a bigger target. The media loves a juicy story. And a child star turned criminal? That's headline gold. If Daniels had been convicted, it would have ruined his life and the story would have been everywhere. Now McClyman stepping up and saying, I did it, not them, sounds like something out of a movie. It makes you wonder if McClyman was trying to protect Daniels because of his fame. Was this some sort of loyalty move? Or maybe, just maybe, there was pressure on McClyman to take the fall. Think about it. If Daniels went down, it wouldn't just be the end of his career. It could have brought a lot of unwanted attention to the people around him, possibly exposing connections that certain people didn't want to be revealed. And let's not forget how strange it is that McClyman's confession cleared both Daniels and Noonley completely. Usually in situations like this, the prosecution tries to pin something on everyone involved. But here, McClyman's confession made it seem like Daniels and Noonley were just innocent bystanders. Is that really believable? Why would they have been there in the first place if they weren't involved? It's almost like McClyman's confession was too perfect, almost as if it was designed to get Daniels off the hook. Some might argue that McClyman was being noble, taking the blame to save his friends, but others might see it differently. Could it be that McClyman was offered something in return for his confession? Maybe a lighter sentence, protection, or even financial support for his family while he's locked up? It's not unheard of in cases like this for someone to take the fall in exchange for something. Valuable. And here's another thing to consider. Why did the jury buy McClyman's confession so easily? Were they swayed by the fact that Daniels was a former child star? Did they think, oh, this guy can't be guilty, he was on TV? Or was there something going on behind the scenes that made sure Daniels walked free? And why did everyone seem so eager to close this case? Could it be that letting Daniels off the hook was part of a bigger plan to keep the focus away from other, more powerful people who might have been involved? After all, in Hollywood, things aren't always what they seem, and sometimes the truth is buried deep beneath layers of lies and deception. After Marcus McClyman took the stand and claimed full responsibility for the stabbing, it left everyone wondering about the truth. 
But then, D.L. Hewley, who had played Daniel's father on The Hewleys, stepped in as a character witness, adding another layer of complexity to the case. Let's look at how D.L. Hewley's testimony might have shaped the outcome of D.J. Daniel's trial. This is where things start to get really interesting. When Hewley took the stand, he wasn't just defending Daniels out of obligation. You could tell he was genuinely worried about what might happen to him. I, the one thing I felt instantly was guilty because I knew how shit, I, I knew something. Like, I can't tell you that I knew to degree. I'm not clairvoyant, but I know, like you say, Sacramento, Stockton, that whole kind of shit, that time of day, it just didn't feel right or read right. So I felt instantly that, that I felt a sense of guilt. Did Hewley know more about what was happening in Daniel's life at the time? Maybe he sensed that Daniels was getting into something dangerous, but he didn't want to interfere too much. This admission of guilt adds a layer of suspicion, making it seem like Hewley was trying to protect Daniels from something he might have already known was coming. Hewley's defense of Daniels wasn't just about clearing his name, he argued that Daniels wasn't a gang member, as the prosecution claimed. Instead, he portrayed Daniels as a young man who made a series of bad decisions and found himself in a terrible situation. How about one man who loved another boy got on stage and told a story? Yeah. Straight How up. about that? The same, look, we got a chance, we both got our chance to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And you got a chance to tell a story with a group of people you picked. But here's where it gets tricky. Was Hewley's testimony enough to convince the jury that Daniels wasn't involved in the stabbing? Or did it simply cast enough doubt to make them hesitate? Hewley's heartfelt words may have made the jury see Daniels as a victim of circumstances rather than a willing participant in gang violence. But was that really the whole truth? Or was there more going on beneath the surface? The trial ended with mixed results. DJ Daniels and Dwayne Noonley were found not guilty, but Marcus McClyman was convicted of voluntary manslaughter and using a knife in the killing. He was sentenced to 11 years in prison. McClyman's decision to take the blame led to his conviction, but it also raised speculation. Did he really act alone, or was he covering for Daniels and Noonley? They got to tell me that I'm going home, but my big homie, my brother, they telling me he's staying. Even though Daniels was acquitted, the trial left a lasting impact on his life. His reputation was damaged, and the emotional toll was significant. But throughout the trial, the focus often shifted towards DJ Daniels, a former child star, rather than on JJ Lewis, the victim. For Lewis's family, this was undoubtedly frustrating, as the person they lost became overshadowed by the fame of one of the accused. The media attention on Daniels likely made the family's grief even more complex, as they had to contend with the public's focus on the defendant rather than on the young man who had been killed. The trial's outcome meant that the Lewis family had to face the reality that not everyone involved would be held accountable in the way they might have hoped. This unresolved sense of justice can deepen the pain of loss, making it even more difficult for the family to find peace and move forward. DJ is innocent, but is he a good guy? The narrative has been all along that DJ only started turning dark when he was finding it difficult to come by roles. But way back in 2005, when he had just landed the role of Ethan in the Disney movie Sky High, co-actor Michael Angarano may have noticed DJ turning dark way before anyone else. It's kind of really a lot like the characters. Except for DJ, actually. DJ is completely different, and I'm scared of him when he's not Ethan. It really shouldn't surprise anyone that DJ may have joined a gang, and I have a very good reason for saying that, so I'll explain later in this video. But let's first confirm that he's likely in a gang by re-examining the whole case, the suspects, who they are, and even D.L. Hewley's own gang affiliations. As soon as DJ's acting career started to slow down, rumors began to swirl that he had become involved with the Bloods, one of the most notorious gangs in the United States. The Bloods are known for their fierce rivalry with the Crips, and both gangs have a strong presence in Compton, California, where DJ was raised. Growing up in such a tough environment, it's not hard to imagine how someone like DJ, once a successful child actor, could find himself caught up in the world of gangs when his career began to falter. When DJ was arrested and was charged with first-degree murder and gang activity, it raised serious questions about his associations. Even though DJ wasn't the one holding the knife, just being with people involved in such a violent act made everyone wonder about his connections. One of the most compelling reasons people believe DJ might be in the Bloods is his connection to D.L. Hewley, who played his TV dad on the Hewleys. Hewley has admitted in the past that he had ties to the Bloods when he was younger. So, so from what I read, you were affiliated with the Bloods at one point. Yeah, 135th and Avalon, fives. Uh, that, that, uh, uh, 135th and Avalon, neighborhood called the 135s. It was where 
I grew up. During DJ's trial, the prosecutor suggested that Hewley's past could have influenced DJ, perhaps even leading him to join the same gang. It's easy to see how DJ might have looked up to Hewley, following in his footsteps not just in acting, but also in life choices. But DJ isn't the only celebrity rumored to have ties to the Bloods. The Compton area where DJ is from has produced many famous rappers who have been linked to the Bloods like Kendrick Lamar, Dr. Dre, and The Game. These artists often rap about gang life, making people wonder if they're involved or just telling stories from their neighborhoods. YG, another rapper from Compton, is more open about his Bloods affiliation. He even organized a peace march between two blood sets, trying to bring peace to the violent gang wars in the area. Seeing all these connections between the entertainment world and the Bloods, it's not hard to imagine that DJ might have gotten involved as well, especially as he struggled to find work and stay relevant in Hollywood. There's also speculation that DJ might have been pressured into joining the Bloods. Growing up in Compton, it's possible that DJ felt like he had no choice but to join a gang for protection, even though he said, uh, Pops moved me out quick real quick i was like uh two and he moved us to the ie rancho cucamonga but maybe his father was too late what's even more intriguing is how people close to dj noticed a change in him after he left hollywood they've said that he started acting differently getting more tattoos and hanging out with a different crowd in my mind i was done acting by the time i wasn't doing my grades and stuff and i wasn't getting no more gigs and even my agents was like all right we ain't messing with you i had already put it in my head like hey i'm done with acting I wasn't really getting the gigs that I wanted. Yeah. I wanted more of gigs like me, you know what I'm saying? And I was getting other type of gigs, so I wasn't really feeling the acting. I was doing it since I was five. This change could be seen as DJ trying to adapt to a new life, one that was far removed from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Whether he joined the Bloods out of necessity, admiration, or a desire to prove himself, it's clear that DJ's life took a drastic turn during this time. Even after being acquitted of the murder charge, the rumors about DJ's gang involvement haven't gone away. California has long been a place where gang battles are intense, especially between the Crips and the Bloods. These two groups started fighting in the early 1970s, with the Crips forming first. When the Crips began causing trouble, smaller groups banded together to create the Bloods to protect themselves. This led to a lot of violence, especially in areas like Los Angeles and Compton. The Crips and Bloods are known for their colors, blue for the Crips and red for the Bloods. But it's not just these two big gangs fighting. Inside both the Crips and the Bloods, there are smaller groups called sets, and sometimes these sets even fight each other. This makes things even more dangerous because you can never really know who is on whose side. When DJ was arrested, the police said that DJ and the other men involved were throwing gang signs, which made it look like the stabbing was related to gang stuff. Even though DJ didn't do the stabbing, just being there made people wonder if he was connected to the Bloods. Specifically, the Looters Park Peru set whose members are known for being really dangerous. Many young guys in Compton feel like they have to join a gang like the Bloods to get respect or just to survive. The gangs offer protection, and when everything around you feels unsafe, that protection can be hard to turn down. The fight that led to J.J. Lewis's death and DJ's arrest isn't something that happened out of nowhere. It's part of a bigger problem with gang violence in California that has been going on for a long time. The Crips and Bloods have caused a lot of pain and loss, especially for young people who get caught up in their world. DJ's involvement, whether he wanted it or not, shows just how hard it can be to break free from this life once you're in it. The curse of the child celeb. Now let's keep it real. You know, even though DJ Daniels had a childhood that many kids might dream of, being on TV, working with famous actors, and becoming a star, Behind the scenes, his life was far from easy. He was born Dorjan Lindell Daniels on October 17, 1988 in Montclair, California, but grew up in Compton, a rough area of Los Angeles. As I mentioned before, his parents moved the family to Rancho Cucamonga to give him a better chance at life away from the gang violence that plagued Compton. Even so, life was still challenging for young DJ. From a very young age, DJ's parents saw that he had a talent for performing. They pushed him to pursue acting. Nah, it was the parents, you know what I'm saying? I'm just okay. a little kid. Yeah. They asked me if I wanted to act. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And then uh, they actually pushed me. And they would get up, take me to auditions, all that. They got my uh, manager and all that. And boom, took off. By the time he was just five years old, he was already appearing in commercials. But this early start in showbiz came at a cost. While other kids his age were playing and enjoying their childhood, DJ was working hard learning lines, and dealing with the pressures of being in front of the camera. 
It's easy to see how this might have made him feel like he was missing out on a normal childhood. DJ's big break came when he was only eight years old, landing a role on the TV show In the House with LL Cool J. This was just the beginning of his acting career, and soon he was appearing on other popular shows like Grace Under Fire and Family Matters. But the role that really made him famous was playing Michael Hewley on The Hewleys. He was just 10 years old when he started on the show, and it turned him into a household name. For a young boy, this kind of fame can be overwhelming, and it's clear that DJ felt the pressure. As his career took off, DJ's parents were very involved, pushing him to keep working and succeed in Hollywood. This kind of pressure, especially at such a young age, can be tough to handle. Kids need time to just be kids, but DJ had to juggle school, acting, and the expectations of everyone around him. This likely caused a lot of stress and made him feel like he couldn't just relax and enjoy being a child. On top of this, DJ's parents separated when he was still young, which added even more turmoil to his life. While it's not clear exactly when this happened, the separation likely had a big impact on him. Going through a family breakup is hard for any child, and for DJ, who was already dealing with the pressures of fame, it must have been even more difficult. This might have left him feeling lonely or looking for a way to cope with the changes in his life. As DJ got older, he found it harder to get roles. Hollywood has a way of typecasting actors, meaning they get stuck playing the same kind of roles over and over. For DJ, who was known as the funny kid from the Hewleys, this became a problem. People in the industry couldn't see him as anything else, and it became harder for him to find work. This was frustrating for DJ, who wanted to grow as an actor and take on new challenges. But instead, he found himself being overlooked for roles, and the offers stopped coming in. Feeling desperate, DJ tried to reinvent himself by getting into rap. He started performing under the name Boy Truth, hoping that music would give him a fresh start and a new way to express himself. But just like acting, making it in the music industry isn't easy. While DJ put out music and tried to build a new career, he didn't find the success he was hoping for. This must have been another blow to his confidence, leaving him wondering what his next move should be. Then came the incident that would change everything, the death of J.J. Lewis. When DJ was arrested in connection with the stabbing, it shocked everyone. The case brought even more negative attention to DJ, and whatever was left of his acting career seemed to crumble. Even though he was eventually acquitted, the damage was done. The trial was a public spectacle, and it painted DJ in a very bad light. For a young man who had already been struggling to find his place in the world, this was a devastating blow. The curse of being a child star is something that many young actors face. While they enjoy fame and success at a young age, they often struggle when they grow up and the roles dry up. For DJ Daniels, this curse was particularly harsh. He lost much of his childhood to acting, dealt with family issues, and faced the pressures of being typecast. When the work stopped coming, he tried to find a new path, but the obstacles were too great. The incident with J.J. Lewis made things worse, casting a dark shadow over his life and career. Daniels isn't the only child star who faced legal troubles. Orlando Brown, known for That's So Raven, encountered serious legal issues, including drug charges and domestic violence. Brian Bonsell from Family Ties was arrested multiple times for assault. Amanda Bynes, who starred in The Amanda Show, also had run-ins with the law, facing DUI charges and other legal issues. These examples show how early fame can lead to significant struggles later in life, with legal troubles often becoming part of the story. If you found DJ's story interesting, click on the video on your screen to see more like it.